It's the new Red Green Show! <laughs> and now here's the man's man, the ladies' man, the man of the people, man oh man, your hero, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to Possum Lodge, where civilization meets nature and nature loses. <laughs> hey, Harold, guess what we're up to at the lodge here tonight? Here's a hint. <laughs> Gonna be filling the cracks in the walls? <laughs> Gonna demonstrate how spiders build their homes? No. <laughs> Gonna be acting stupid and immature? <laughs> yeah, he got it, yeah. See, about a month ago, Junior single got engaged, and we were all shocked, because she's a real nice girl. But uh, they've done all the, all the shopping for gifts, you know, and all the fittings and all that crap. And finally, tonight, it all pays off in the big celebration that every man looks forward to. No, 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 Uncle Red. The wedding's not till tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about the stag party, Harold. <laughs> stag party's tonight, okay? Moose Thompson's organizing the food fight, and Buster Hadfield's doing all the dirty tricks, and old man Sedgwick is marking the cards. <laughs> what, what are you doing to contribute to the fun, Harold? I'm not going. Perfect. <laughs> What you're looking at here is a bunch of segments from this particular show. The main message being, for gosh sakes, don't even think about changing the channel. I'll tell you something, if you're going to try and make sense out of this program, you got to give it your undivided attention. Few hours to go to junior stag party. I think I got all my supplies in here. Hand buzzer, plaster bandages, ball and chain, laxatives that look like chocolate, <laughs> hot gum, molasses, animal tranquilizer, indelible ink, whoopee cushion, whoopee pillow, whoopee mattress, whoopee. <laughs> Uncle Red! Uncle Red! <laughs> I got good news, I got bad news. Junior asked me to go to the stag, and I said yes. What's the good news? <laughs> he also asked me to get the movies, you know? He said, the movies. And I said, okay. <laughs> but I have no idea what he's talking about. Oh, sure you do, Harold. He's talking about the movies. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, I went to all the places to get the movies. You know, I went to the convenience store, the gas bar, the coffee shop, the laundromat. Uh, you know, all the good movies are gone. Did you try the video store? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Uncle Red, have I got some hot movies for the stag tonight? Forget it, Harold. None of that stuff, all right? I have too much respect for women. We're not going to be watching filthy movies. Filthy movies? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. These are war movies. All right. The Desert Fox, the big red one, Buck Privates. Who are you kidding, Harold? <laughs> All right, if you like ukulele music, change the channel right now. <laughs> this is a little preview of the Adventures with Bill, kind of a Hawaiian theme, and uh, no lace. You can't just have one, apparently. No, Bill, that's not going to work. That's not. That doesn't feel like Welcome to Hawaii to me. It feels more like Welcome to Fire Island. Oh. 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 Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll take that. I'll take care. I'll get, I'll get my own lays. Thank you. That's, a, that's something to live by right there. And uh, what the Bill wants to do all through the show is he's going to uh, cook a turkey, and, uh, the luau style of turkey, where they dig the hole in the ground. It's a kind of a traditional ritual thing, a kind of a Polynesian thing. And I, this is part of the dance, I believe. Where apparently, the hands tell the story. Yeah. Oh, and the dirt tells the story. It's oh, and the shovel usually ends the story. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we like to do some of the traditional cooking up at the lodge, and uh, this is uh, the Hawaiian, the Polynesian, as I say, the Fiji. The Fiji, have they Fiji yet? Uh, yet? No, well, they haven't cooked. Well, never mind. So I'm, I'm Bill's digging with the, no, Bill, that's a ukulele, that's an instrument. You don't use that. You don't use that. I use that. 
Now you, you did use the shovel. Bill's very creative. There you go. Oh, for gosh sakes. Oh, I know a guy with a car named Sue. He was the butt of many jokes. He had named his car after his wife, because it's hard to start and it smokes. <laughs> Okay, this is the big one for the grand prize of a set of keys to a brand new bungalow worth over $200,000. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, boy. Hey. Who donated that one, Harold? The guy who bought the bungalow. He's just going to throw away these keys. He got new locks in the house, so he didn't even want these. <laughs> That's a good keychain right there. You can use the keychain. All sorts of things. It's great. I'll call Red. You have 30 seconds to get Dalton Humphrey to say this word. Disgust. Disgust. <laughs> And go. All right, Dalton, here we go. Okay, when when you and your wife disagree about something, you and she... Argue. No, 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 no yelling, no yelling. No, you said my wife. Oh, yeah, all right, okay, no, okay. Could be anybody's wife or girlfriend, no. or both, right, Harold? <laughs> or in your case, neither. <laughs> okay, uh, another word for talk. Nag. Dialogue. Diatribe. Share ideas. Complain. <laughs> Almost out of time, Uncle Red. Okay, you want to communicate in a friendly way. To give in. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So if, if your wife wants to nag, argue, or complain about something, she'll say, honey, there's something we have to... Why? <laughs> no, 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 no. And, 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 and before you buy anything, first you would... Shield over stone dead. <laughs> Putting one more dime into that living room. You know, people come over, they expect to see the odd moth hole in plaid drapes. The case is closed. I don't want to discuss it. Okay. Hey! Man, what is with these car companies? What's the point in even having a gas gauge if it's not accurate? Now, when it says full, it is full. And I got the wet pants to prove it. But when it says empty, Gosh, you might have another 50 miles in there. Or, as in the case today, you might, in fact, be empty. <laughs> so this week, on Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how to make a cost-effective hot tub. What does a hot tub have to do with fuel tanks, you're asking? Shh. Now, I'm going to make my hot tub out of an old freezer. You know, freezers are meant to keep things cold. And uh, since this one doesn't anymore, I figure, why not use it to keep things warm? Well, let's get started and find out why not. <laughs> now, I know this isn't going to make us a very big hot tub, but I'll tell you, with all the STDs and GSTs and IOUs going around, maybe it's time to get back to those innocent times when you used to just play with yourself in the bathtub. <laughs> well, maybe some of you at home are saying, hey, Red, why not just use the bathtub itself? Well, first of all, don't confuse me stopping for breath with a request for suggestions, all right? <laughs> and secondly, with the lid on the freezer here, you can keep the heat in and the bird treats out. And we got a little light on there, which makes it real nice for the romantic late night dips and maybe it can help you find your toupee. Now, what you do now is to, to turn this into a hot tub, maybe all you need is like a pump with a couple of hoses on her there. And uh, I know, I know, you're supposed to add water and you're supposed to put bleach in there to kind of purify the water. You need some way of adding air to it, but that's if you're building a real hot tub. I'm not. <laughs> this here is a fake. It's just a decoy. I'm actually just solving the gas gauge problem with the possum van. <laughs> All right, we just want it to look like a hot tub so the visitors will park their car nearby without worrying. What it really is is our very own personal gas station. See? <laughs> so what you do when nobody's looking, you take one end of the hose, you stick that into their gas tank, and you grab your reversible pump control, press suck, and it puts all their gas into the, well, not all their gas. You want to leave them a little bit so they can get a few miles down the road, you know, and they won't expect anything. <laughs> and, of course, some of you might want to close the lid on that. You don't want the gas fumes to give you away. We've all been there, haven't we? All right, then we'll just cut that off, and then what you do is uh, you bring your own vehicle nearby, and uh, you put the end of the hose into your own vehicle, and then you press the pump on the blow, and you, and you actually uh, fill up your own tank with air gas, huh? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> My golly. <laughs> no one's any the wiser. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Tell you one more fill up, and I qualify for a complete set of dinnerware. <laughs> I 
by golly, I'm wrong. This is a hot tub. <laughs> Stay tuned and relax. Whatever this is, we got a lot more of it. I know some of you teenagers are working hard at school, maybe sweating out some kind of a slave labor job on the weekends, only to arrive home and have your parents say, clean up your room. No, you can't have a motorcycle. The police want to talk to you, you better hide that stereo. <laughs> right about now, you're probably thinking, when does the fun start? When does life start turning into one of them beer commercials? You know, where everybody's laughing and eating and not working and not getting fat? You're probably thinking you're the only person in the world not having any fun. But the truth is, for the most part, everybody's faking it, all right? Even in the beer commercial, the laughing and eating is just those people working. I'll tell you something. In my whole life, I've only found three things that were pure fun. Fishing, long in the Possum Lodge, and pants with an elastic waistband. <laughs> oh, well, my golly, that was some stag we threw for Junior last night, man. <laughs> and the women missed the whole thing. They were at some stupid shower for the bride. It was a, a lecture on cooking or something. They had some guy named Mr. Super Buns. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bernice said it was a real eye-opener, you know. <laughs> but by golly, we had ourselves... You know, Harold, I didn't see you there. Oh, thanks, Uncle Red. Yeah, I left as soon as the practical joke started. The guy can only take so many wedgies. <laughs> <laughs> Better to give than receive, Harold. <laughs> you know, originally, we were just going to play uh, tricks on uh, Junior there, because he was, he was the groom and everything, but then... You know, some smart aleck yelled out, get the head usher, <laughs> you know. That was you, Uncle Red, you yeah, yelled that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I had, the, I had the molasses and the feathers, you know, and waste not, want not, you know. <laughs> so we did the, all the ushers and the wedding party and the father of the bride and everything. Then we just started working our way through the crowd. <laughs> you go to a party like that and it makes you see it's worthwhile getting married, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right, all right, okay, okay. Well, what are you going to do if the groom isn't there? Oh, it's there, Harold. We taped it to Stinky's pant leg. No, 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 no. Not the broom. The groom. Oh, the groom. <laughs> Junior's still missing. No, he's not. We stripped him down. We chained him to the dock. Hey? Last I heard, he was getting some decent nibbles. No. <laughs> no. That wasn't Junior. That was You did that to Flinty McClinton. No, 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 no. Flinty, yes. we, Flinty, we, no. Harold, Flinty, we put into a body cast. We put him on a one-way train to... You know, that might have been Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go! Red, way to go! Wedding's less than two hours and there's no groom. Way to go! Well, she just have to marry Flinty instead. I'm sure Flinty's wife is happy to let somebody else take over for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, meanwhile, back with Don Ho's evil twin brother, Gung Ho. Ooh! <laughs> golly, there's the turkey. <laughs> and it's a boy. By golly. All right. Now we've dug the hole. We had a fire going there. We can... Okay, okay, okay. Bill, Bill, come on now. All right, uh, we got the rocks all heated up there, and the way, the way you cook the glue, oh, wow, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. You get the rocks, the hot rocks, and you actually put them right into the turkey. Fire one in there, Bill. Here we go, here we go. Oh, boy, and there we are. Oh, my guy. And I'll tell you, if you don't think that's painful, you ask a turkey. Then you drop her into the hole, and then you put the hot rocks all around the turkey there. Come on, Bill, a few more. Firemen, 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 firemen. Get them in there, get them in, 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 get them in. There they go. And now you cover up that whole unit with the dirt because you want to seal that in. It's almost like a pressure cooker type of thing you're doing here in the Hawaiian Polynesian, as I say, the Fiji style of life. And I uh, just, I'll uh, just, uh, oh, Bill's got the ukulele to help him. Okay, that's good. And we cover up with dirt. You want to get it all completely covered with the, the dirt of the area, the authentic. And then he's bringing in the various leaves, and this helps flavor. It gives it kind of a, the flavoring, and it gives it, well, that changes the taste, apparently. And also, what have we got next, Bill? Ah, the car mats out of a K-car. And now, we'll be back when dinner's ready. Away you go. Oh, man. <laughs> So I've devised a 12-step program, one that'll help you overcome this biological imperative. No more excuses. No more saying, sorry, it's a guy thing. No! <laughs> now, I'd like to throw open the floor to my Uncle Red to start the meeting. Uncle Red. Man. All right, uh, I'm Red and I'm a man. All right. Hi, Red. All right, let's all do the Men Anonymous pledge. I'm a male, no. but I, I can, can change. change. If I have to, I guess. Now, let's get the meeting started by just sharing some of our emotions. Who would like to start by sharing your emotions? 
Would someone like to state their opinion? Oh, I thought so. Okay, yeah. All right, how about uh, Dougie? Oh. Yep. <laughs> Gentlemen, my name is Dougie. I'm a man. Hi, Hi Dougie. Dougie. <sighs> Gentlemen, last week was a difficult one for me. I was, I was tempted to fall off the wagon and go right back into some old bad habits. The temptation occurred right in front of the hardware store. There was a fella there changing a flat tire on his pickup truck, and well, he was doing it wrong. <laughs> he didn't even put his wheel nuts in the hubcap. <laughs> I bit my tongue, I bit my tongue, and then it occurred to me. Un pièce de résistance au Dougie. <laughs> I got my truck. I parked right beside him where he was changing his tire, and I started changing one of my tires, even though it wasn't flat. <laughs> and I changed that sucker the right way, so that sorry excuse for a man would learn. <laughs> way to go, Dougie. Well, dinner had taken quite a while, and I kind of dozed off in the sun, but uh, luckily, I had left a wake-up call. There we go. And now we're set to check out our, uh, dig up our turkey, and it should be cooked to perfection now, and uh, Bill's digging there with uh, just something that I hadn't noticed earlier, and I think maybe we got lucky there, you know? Uh, yeah, we don't get lucky that often. No, you're not worried. It's a re he thinks we're gonna get lucky twice, and that never happens. <laughs> You all right there, Bill? Huh? I think you may have hit a, you may have hit a berry there. You may, have hit a, you may have hit a wire there, Bill. Oh, man. We'll be back when this rock concert's over. Oh, boy. Here's a gift from our friends at the Outback Pub in Ottawa. It's a briefcase. Meanwhile, back at the Oh Wow Luau, we're still trying to dig up the turkey, and looks like, you got it? You got it, Bill? You got the turkey? Is it all done? <laughs> Vegetables? Well, that happened. Well, and, you know, it is a farmer's field here. Maybe somebody must have planted something. Anyway, that's, that's the beauty of the luau. You don't... Yeah, we got a lot of vegetables there. This will help me see at night is about when we're going to find the darn thing. What do you got? What do you got? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's, a, that's kind of... That's a treasure. That's a... There's a... Ch that's a... Ch that's got that... That's, there's value there. There's Captain Hook. That's... Oh, the hooks. Oh, man. Still no turkey? Huh? I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's one. Well, Flinty has declined the opportunity to marry Junior's fiance, so I would suggest that Junior show up for this wedding sometime real soon. It's okay, Uncle Rat. I just got a fax over my fax modem. Junior's on his way back. He's up near Kenora. Well, why didn't he just fax himself, Harold, rather than just the note? <laughs> fax a person over a fax machine. Woo! <laughs> Boy, you just don't get this modern technology stuff, do you, Uncle Red? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Woo! Back to person. Hello. Mm. <laughs> dumb, eh? Yeah, dumb, dumb, yeah. dumb. Because they do it on Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I'd hear Harold say that Star Trek is dumb. No, no, no. Uh, I didn't. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that, Captain uh, Picard. You heard me not say that, right? <laughs> Hello, Klingons. <laughs> Put that away. We gotta get over to the church. Come on, the wedding starts in half an hour. Well, what are we gonna do? Like, Junior's like five hours away. Well, don't get your jockeys into a jam, Harold. It's not our problem. <laughs> Getting the groom to the church is the job of the best man. Uncle Red, you're the best man. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> All right, come on, Harold. Why, what? I gotta get a groom to the church. Nobody says it has to be Junior. Why are you? Harold, it's just a, it's a proxy thing. That's all it is, okay? You just say the vows on Junior's behalf. Come on, just proxy, it's just yeah. words, it's just words. Just words. You just take his place just for the wedding, just, okay. okay? All right. Let's hope he shows up before the honeymoon starts, Harold. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Boy, we've all been there on this one, haven't we? <laughs> well, you just get home, you're about to walk in the house, yeah. and then it hits you. Wasn't I supposed to do something on the way home? She can't remember what it was. Can't tell her that. You know how she gets. Oh, no. So you got to jog your own memory. Here's how to do it. Right. Slip in the house real quiet. Yeah. Count the kids. <laughs> if you're short one or two, 
Maybe you're supposed to pick them up somewhere. Oh, oh, and while you're counting, count the cars in the driveway. If you're missing one, maybe you were supposed to pick her up at a service station or on the side of a highway or something. <laughs> right, or if there's too many cars, that means you must have company. Maybe you're supposed to pick up some groceries, huh? Oh, check your pockets for a list. She might have slipped you. Yeah. If you come up empty there, then just walk right into the house, say, honey, I'm home. Give her the big hug, the big one. Big, big hug, hug. Yeah. big hug. And yeah. while her back's turned to the calendar, check out the date, see if there's a birthday or an anniversary written in. Okay. If you don't see anything there, then maybe you just forgot to get a loaf of bread or a quart of milk or something. Yeah. She'll just call you stupid and laugh at you. Consider yourself lucky. You got off easy. This time. <laughs> All right, this is it now. We're getting close. We're getting close because Bill found a rock. Yeah, we got to be getting there, Bill. Get rid of the rock. <laughs> I didn't mean that way. All right. He's got the turkey, though. Look at that. Oh, my God. Can you smell that? Isn't that beautiful? Wow. What are you doing? Oh, Bill's auditioning for his puppet show for kids. Oh, man. Get away from me there with that thing. All right. There's our... Look at that. Look at the table setting. Oh, my. Presentation is almost nothing of this. We need something to drink, Bill. Need something to drink. Can you handle that? Ha! What? What do you got down there? Oh, a water pipe. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, man. Frightening enough. Well, as it turned out, Junior did make it to the church on time because the ceremony was so late getting started. The guys were all hurting up so bad from the stag party, it took them forever to get into the pews. <laughs> it was a nice touch, though, having old man uh, Sedgwick as the ring boy. Yeah, well, he's got all those rings. You know, Harold, he's like a tree without the intelligence. <laughs> Took Junior a long time to get the ring on the bride's finger, though, because yeah. he was still all covered in the molasses and the feathers and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you guys would have washed him up a bit. Well, we thought of hosing him down, but then he'd get married in his underwear, so it was fine. That worked oh. out fine. Right? <laughs> well, the bride said she thought she was getting married to Big Bird. <laughs> well, she won't say that after the honeymoon, I'll tell you. <laughs> It's this cry of the possum. It's meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead. Be sure to remind the guys we've got a bridal suite to sabotage yet. Okay. <laughs> I take my responsibilities as best man very seriously. So my wife is watching. I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'll tell you, you know, what the wedding and all the romance and the young love and everything. I was hoping maybe later on we could have some fun. Huh? <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, thanks for watching, and keep your stick on the ice. Someone uh, ran over my favorite hat on the highway, yeah. which isn't so bad, but would you please just wait till I'm out of it next time? <laughs> <laughs> it must have been Stinky's car, there's no tread marks. <laughs> Stinky's car.